He came out of the Ottawa Valley in the 1960s and compiled an incredible riding record. Two Olympic Games appearances, gold, silver, and bronze in two Pan Am Games, countless Grand Prix victories, and he represented Canada in 23 Nations Cups over the course of a 30-year riding career. That alone would get you in the Hall of Fame. But for Terence Torchy Miller, he was just getting started. Even at the age of sort of 16, 17, he was like a young professional in, in everything he did with the horses, and he, he carried that all through his riding career. He was always such a smooth rider, and he had a, a un, unique way of releasing his horses up the crest of the neck. Very famous horses like Phoenix Park. And uh, what impressed me about Torchy was what a, a classic rider he was. And he, uh, though, though at that time I didn't know him very well, he, he really epitomized um, to me what um, what all young riders wanted to aspire to, and that was the, the technique that he, he showed, the compassion he had for the horse. Uh, he was such a horseman. He's just stayed involved when he, when he hung up the stirrups. He wasn't out of the sport. He was not out of the sport by a long shot. As a coach and trainer, he would teach the likes of Lisa Carlson, Beth Underhill, and Chris Delia. All Olympians, and all successful at a very young age. Torchy was more about what the horse required, and, if, and he'd get frustrated that if you just didn't find that little thing, that little ethereal, abstract thing that makes that horse go well, he, he, he'd get frustrated with you and he would show that to you. So that part of it was shocking, and it really made me, it forced me to have to learn to think like a horseman does. He really put a lot of finishing touches on, on my riding, uh, and not just in that respect, but also behind the scenes, the maintenance, the management of these horses. There was one particular uh, horse that we bought as a three-year-old, and we bought it completely on blind faith, trusting Torchy's word on it and his contact over in Ireland. The horse's name was Harp. And we bought him as a three-year-old, sight unseen, just based on a picture and, and just Torchy's good reputation. That first horse that we really bought, that young one sight unseen, ended up being one of Canada's top uh, amateur horses. He was really famous. He's responsible for me uh, getting the ride on Monopoly. And that meant a lot because at the time I was working for Torchy, he was still very much uh, in the competitive game and was a Grand Prix rider himself. So to you know, push that horse to, to me, who was just an up-and-coming young rider, that was huge. I mean, you, you don't see someone really that selfless and, and um, someone who would really wanted to help a younger rider coming along. Torchy's reputation for matching the right horse with the right rider became his signature throughout the 80s and 90s. Torchy has uh, found horses for the riders, has directed riders, go look at that one, I think it would be a good match for you type of thing, through his whole career. His reputation amongst most of the European dealers and riders was, as a Canadian, second to none, as a North American, second to none. Horses like Leacock, Grand Slam, and Rivendell all came to Canadian riders thanks to Torchy. With Canada's deepening talent pool, Torchy's next calling was to lead the way. His biggest and most important role has been as chef to keep. He's brought um, professionalism and dedication to this sport, which is probably unequal. Ironically, Torchy's breakthrough result as chef came just 10 days after a disastrous showing at WEG in 2006. Bring the good lessons with you but leave all the emotional nonsense behind and move on because next week is another competition and you better go into that believing in yourself and your horse and your, your, and your, your teammates or you won't win. So by the time Torchy and I arrived in, in Calgary, we really believed we had the winning team and sure enough we did. Imagine! 31 years! 31 years it took us! Yeehaw! <laughs> The results continued to pour in. A second consecutive Nations Cup at Wellington, Florida in the spring of 2007. And then it was off to Rio for the Pan Am Games. Individual gold for Jill Henselwood and Special Ed, bronze for Eric Lamaze and Hickstead, and a team silver that indicated that Canada might be on the verge of something special. The Summer Olympics of 2008 were just around the corner. It was just a, an exact continuation of what we had been doing for two years. It, we, uh, you're in a 
a new ring, their jumps, their questions. And we have to answer those questions and then we have to perform. And uh, that was the beauty of it. It was, it was, we were all at such a comfort zone. We knew we had really good horses and we knew we had really good teammates and we all respected each other and we had a great coach. Well, we got there and we were feeling pretty good about ourselves. We come up for the Nations Cup and uh, I was the lead off guy and um, jumped the first jump, canter up 10 strides to a single vertical and he, he falls right through it, falls right through it. He had basically bowed a tendon and he went around that whole Olympic course. Three vex. Big heart, big heart. In the morning of the second round, Torchy calls me early in the morning and I could tell right away he wasn't so happy and he told me about Max Horse. I was even dressed and we even jogged him again 20 minutes before I was supposed to get on him and Torchy wouldn't let me go when I wasn't gonna go. Well, we just have to do it the hard way. That's with three. Torchy just kept saying, we're, we're down to three, but we're still right there. Don't give up, don't give up. Don't you know Jill leads us off? <laughs> she gave the whole world a riding lesson that night. Strong four strides help him with the width. And again, beautiful one ride. jump away. This is the Jill Hensel that we know, huh, Nancy? Fantastic. And Canada gets the first clean round of the class today. There's Matt Cohn. Canada's Jill Hensel with the first clean What goal. a comeback. What a comeback. Eric had his only rail. He had four faults, and then Ian. Pressure. Does it. Ian Miller does it once again. He's done it before, a clean round. He's under the time allowed. Torchy's team had won Olympic silver, coupled with Eric's historic gold, the best result ever by a Canadian show jumping team. Uh, he becomes a real horseman with me. He's always looking at my horse and he's analyzing it. Then he'll make just a quiet comment. And almost, almost every time he's right on, he's right on with his comment. And he always puts it very subtly. He doesn't sort of jam it down your throat at all. It's just a quiet suggestion. So I just change a little something because uh, at the top end, it's all about inches and details. And he is so sharp about that. His qualities as a leader are, are, are quite amazing. And uh, the one thing I'd, uh, I remember him saying, uh, he came up to me because I was asking questions to a lot of the different riders on our team what I should do. He pulled me to the side and he says, you know, Mac, you go find Brindley, that's my wife, and um, the two of you talk because you know that horse better than anybody and she knows that horse better than anybody and you guys will figure out the best way to ride this course. And uh, for a coach to say that, that was instead of saying, I'm going to take over and give you advice, he knew the best way to handle me. Some of the success has been attributed to a change in the process of picking the team, a change that Torchy felt had to be made. He spent quite a lot of time uh, developing that process. You know, geographically, we have difficulties in Canada. We don't have the largest population in Canada. You know, he just didn't have 500 riders to pick from. And so a much different scenario than what other countries have. And, and Torchy found a way that worked for everyone and delivered the results that we, as a country, wanted to get. While Canada's resurgence hit its zenith in Hong Kong, it didn't stop there. 2010 saw the fourth Nations Cup victory in five years at prestigious Wellington, an individual bronze for Eric and Hickstead, and an eighth place finish for John Pierce at Wegg in the fall. Torchy's team, Lamaze, Pierce, Jan Candele, and Jonathan Miller qualified Canada for London with a fifth place finish in the team competition. The names are not always the same, but Team Canada keeps on delivering. He has stayed extremely current in the sport. It's very easy to become, um, to rest on your laurels and say, oh, I've achieved a certain amount of success. I, I'm just going to follow my path and do my own thing. But what Torchy's done is always investigate, always keep up on what's, what's happening in the sport, what's new. He's always a step ahead. As a chef to keep, there are so many things to balance, so many constituents to please, 
And Torchy has always had an extraordinary knowledge of what to do and always showed the wisdom of when to do it. Terence Torchy Miller is a Canadian equestrian treasure. His effect on the sport reaches beyond the borders of Canada and has put us front and center with the show jumping superpowers all around the world. You watch the relationship he has with the other famous coaches and chef to keeps in other nations. I mean, you know, uh, that same respect lives through all of that. And so, um, and that helps our country. I mean, our country is a small country relative in terms of numbers and things like that. And if you've got somebody who's speaking on behalf of our country, uh, it, who is, has a great deal of respect amongst them, it, it goes a long ways. And, uh, and that's something that we needed and Torchy's delivered for us. It's a passion. It's about a sport he loves. It's the animals he loves. He loves the riders. He loves the lifestyle. He loves everything about it.